Hello everyone and welcome to the introduction to flipped learning. Utilizing technology to engage students and achieve higher level thinking through individualized learning. Let's begin by having a common definition of what flipped learning is. Flipped learning is a pedagogical approach in which the direct instruction moves from the group learning space to the individual learning space and the resulting group space is transformed into a dynamic interactive learning environment where the educator guides students as they apply concepts and engage creatively in the subject matter. Boy, that's a lot of words. Let's unpack this a little bit. First off, it's a pedagogical approach. It's grounded in good, sound pedagogy. Second, the individualized learning space at home typically is where the focus is to deliver basic content. And this leaves time for an interactive learning environment in the classroom where students can explore, analyze, and hopefully even create new information. And this all relates or engages the students creatively in 21st century skills. Now, a key aspect of flipped learning is essentially turning Bloom's taxonomy on its head. Now, we're all familiar with the different levels of Bloom's taxonomy, starting with remembering all the way up to creating. And most of the time in class, in a traditional lecture or lesson, teachers spend a lot of time on the remembering and understanding, getting that foundational knowledge into the students. And flipped lessons or flipped learning really turns Bloom's taxonomy on its head. And rather than focusing the class time on all of the remembering and understanding, the class time is focused on applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating new information. So in the flipped learning model, at home, that's where the remembering and understanding lesson is delivered. And in class, that's where the focus is on the higher level thinking skills in Bloom's taxonomy. So let's take a look now at what is flipped learning and I think it's important to distinguish what flip learning is not before we even further look into what flip learning really is. So flip learning is not online learning. And while some aspects of flip learning do involve the student working self-paced at home, perhaps watching a video, online learning is really a different approach that does not take into account that physical connection in the classroom. Flip learning is not videotaped lectures simply taking what you would have told the students in class and videotaping that for at-home experience is, is, while it can be a part of flipped learning, it's a very simplistic way of looking at it. And finally, blended learning. Flipped learning is really much more than blended learning. Blended learning is defined as using technology integrated into the classroom much more as a in-class uh, experience. So what is flipped learning? Well, first off, it's student-centered. It really focuses the learning and the obligation of the learning on the student. Secondly, it engages students in an active learning model, which research says that it's a very effective way for students to learn and learn deeper. It's constructivist, where the students construct their own meaning in the class. And it's deeper thinking. It's utilizing those higher level thinking skills of Bloom's taxonomy. Now. Four pillars of flipped learning, as defined by the flipped learning network, really are some of the, the, the frameworks by which you can build on your flipped learning lessons. First off, it's a flexible learning environment. That means that the spaces, the time frames, how students interact, really can look quite different in a flipped learning environment. Secondly, the learning culture. This is a very big shift, particularly for students. Students are used to coming in and being told or learning from the lesson in a passive way. Flip learning turns that so that the learning culture is really put back onto the students and the teacher becomes truly the guide on the side. Intentional content. This is a key aspect of lesson plan development with flip learning where the teacher really looks at which content can be developed and, and delivered to the students at home typically the remembering and the understanding aspects of the lesson, and which content is best utilized in the classroom with higher level thinking skills. 
And lastly, professional educator. Making yourself available to students as an advisor, observing students, providing them feedback, all of the great teaching techniques that we know work with students allows you to do that in class when you have a very actively engaged environment. So you might be asking yourself right now, well, why flip the classroom? What are the advantages of that? Well, let's take a look at three advantages of flip learning. Number one, it integrates into the student's digital life. Students today are very socially active with social media, YouTube, Google, and the internet. And even at younger ages, students are certainly very active on the internet, even though they may not be involved in social media. And by taking your lessons, taking your content, and putting that into the digital stream, if you will, of the student's life, really makes it relevant and very accessible to students. Number two, flipping your class really provides for real differentiation. That could be students who are struggling, and it also can be students who need the extra challenge. By providing this real differentiated instruction available to students, they can all benefit from flipped learning. And finally, it increases student engagement. As I discussed earlier, that notion of taking your classroom and now turning it into a very active classroom, working on higher level thinking skills, increases the student engagement and the student ownership of their own learning. So you might be saying, okay, this sounds good, but how do I do this? Well, I've outlined four steps here that we're going to go through in this lesson. Step number one, any good lesson starts with good lesson objectives, and it's no different with flipped learning. Number two, determine what content can be learned outside the classroom. Now, this might be a departure from a traditional lesson where you might do in the classroom, where you consciously think of, now, what information can I give the students at home that will prepare them for the lesson that will, will take place in the classroom, which is going to get at those higher level thinking skills. Number three, create or curate the at-home lesson. We're going to spend a lot of time on this together in class, looking at the technology tools, the web resources that you can use to actually develop this lesson, and some of the technical skills you'll need to actually accomplish that. And then finally, develop your lesson plan to engage students in activities that promote higher level thinking. This is where the meat happens with flip learning model. You're focusing your in-class lesson on where are those areas students can engage, they can work together, they can collaborate to get to that deeper thinking, that deeper understanding of the material that they have already created a foundation with at home. So in order to check for the understanding of this lesson, what I'd like you to do next is click on the flipped learning quiz in Canvas under the, uh, the lesson for this today's lesson. And you'll take a short quiz on the material in this presentation. You can go back, review this material on the video, um, watch it as necessary in order to complete the quiz, and then submit that before class time. Thanks for watching the Introduction to Flipped Learning.